the demo shop goes Irish. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. But before we get into that, the Nashville Guitar Show is coming up. It's located in Franklin, Tennessee at the Williamson County Agro Park on Saturday, March 23rd and the 24th. It's looking like they've got a huge arena, and they're saying they've got 25 additional vendors from what you're seeing here from last year's footage. And there's going to be buyers from the US, UK, Europe, and Japan, as well as some manufacturers. So if you've got a guitar that you're looking to sell, maybe even trade or just buy something, definitely check out this show that is the sponsor of tonight's episode. But if you're like me and you're always like, ah oh, man, is it worth going? I thought just for fun, let's skim through this video together. So we've got a couple of interesting Telecasters that might be nice to try out. This one almost looks like one of the rarities Telecasters in the blue cloud finish. Ooh, a vintage dove screwed on pick guard version with hang tags. That's pretty neat. That vintage SG special sure catches my eye with that late 60s, early 70s case. Those rectangles always have a certain vibe to them. That was just a tenor guitar. Heavily played and modified gold top. And whoa, I think I remember seeing that one on Reverb. <laughs> That's funny, a mid 60s melody maker routed out for two humbuckers and then what looks like almost a mini humbucker there, they've converted it into custom block inlays. That was just an SG Menace, but it's more than guitars. They've got amps, pedals, but I do catch a beautiful Antigua back there. Ooh, even a Wildwood. I still need to review one of those. L6S and Silverburst, and they've got plenty of acoustics, so a little something for everyone. So once again, mark your calendars, March 23rd, March 24th. It might be worth the trip. And hey, if you're in the Nashville area, there's a bunch of other shops there, including the Gibson Garage. So even if you don't see anything at the show, I'm sure you can find something in Nashville. But now the mod collection, getting in the holiday spirit for St. Patrick's Day. Kicking it off with Les Paul Jr. in Pato Green. It appears to be a Les Paul Jr. that has a new painted pickguard, matching knobs, and black plastics. That's a serious missed opportunity for a gold cover. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Do the gold colored inlays too. I suppose it's kind of redeemed on the headstock with the regular gilded look of the logos. But new truss rod cover. But the back got the matching treatments. All for 2200 but my personal favorite is the Zesty Green Burst on a modern studio. We recently documented this model, and it pains me that people just don't get it. Like, you gotta try one. And then realize it does actually have black binding, so it's basically just like a Les Paul standard, but without the body binding. They are better than they look in stock photos. But this one has a new custom green finish. I like it. It's similar to the key lime that we saw last week, as they've dressed it up with some lighter plastic colors. But that board looks fantastic fantastically dark. But our headstock was left alone? The back, that's where things get interesting. It's still a satin finish, but we've kind of got that lighter green for the neck and then the dark green stinger. A gold grain fill would have been really sweet, but it looks like we might have some different colors within that greener side of the neck. But yeah, even this one has the fret sprout issue. And they were looking for a $400 premium on that. And it seems they got their pot of gold. But how about Techno Gecko Green for $2,500? This is a Gibson USA SG standard. It's got that cool 64 style vibrola, but they omitted the pick guard when they did the satin reef in. So a custom shop looking guitar without the custom shop price tag. And it's got the complimentary back finish as well. But hey, here's an interesting one for you lefties. 3,100 bucks gets you the first green back. So from the front, it just looks like an ebony Les Paul standard. Nice cream plastics. But then as the name implies, the back is green. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it works or not, but I appreciate that they're at least going along with the holiday theme. Unfortunately, they didn't really share us a nice side profile shot. But now instead of green, we're going to lean more heavily into the gold with Brunch Blast Sparkle. So this one's 4,800 bucks based on a 58 reissue. So I believe those are about five grand. So you're technically getting a discount and a custom color. I think it actually looks pretty nice. It reminds me of the old Harvest Gold Les Paul Customs. Maybe a little bit more reddish and it's the perimeter burst rather than teardrop shaped. But check out the back. Really ringy wood grain. I like that. It's unique. But then the neck is so sinister with very large and dense poured wood grain. Reminds me of what you would see on like an SG. And our headstock was lightly modified without a Les Paul model silk screen. But here's one you don't see every day, a 54 reissue, Burnt Clementine for 45. As the name suggests, it's kind of a clementine color, but whoa. At first I just thought, okay, 54 reissue, wrap tail, didn't think much about it, but no, that's a mahogany top. 
The original gold tops. Occasionally you can find ones without the maple top. Historically, they're viewed as worth a little bit less, but in my opinion, it kind of makes them cool. So there's a little bit of added flair to this one besides the paint job. In the back, I cannot tell if that's just the natural color of the mahogany, like it's really light, or if they put a very mild orange finish on it. Either way, it's cool. And Demo Shop Cereal, 99. We're almost to 100. But this junior was called Get It Orange. 2200 bucks. It took your pick card away, gave it, I don't know, would you call that a bright orange finish? Like, you could make it more attacking. But yet it's not the dullest orange in the world. Somewhere right in between. They didn't get too crazy with a matching headstock. But they did give it the full refin and upgraded your tuners to Grover's. Now we've got an SG standard base. This is kind of that duller finish that we were just talking about. But what would you guys call it? If you answered nut butter, you'd be correct. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of what it looks like. But if somebody asked me, hey, what color is your guitar? I'm sure not going to say it's nut butter color, but kind of a brownish orange. Top back and sides for 2400 but then there were two mold breakers. Here's Violet Tart Flake. Les Paul Special, 2300. I can't really see much except for really dark purple. So let's adjust the contrast and now you can enjoy it. It looks like, yeah, we've got a couple of sparkles. Okay, maybe that would be pretty cool. Super dark fretboard. Straight black headstock. Oh, okay. Here's a photo that shows off the sparkliness even better. That is a nice color. And I'm sure it's also on the back. Maybe I slept on that one. And then lastly, Plum Blast, 3,300 bucks. It's kind of a reddish purple, as you would expect. We've got the radiator cover style, but I appreciate the fretboard matching the guitar. Like that's one of those times where the fretboard probably inspired the finish, but it appears to be a complete gloss refin, but that headstock, interesting for a 335 to get mini Grovers. They look really out of place. That the EU mod collection was like, hey, we've been boring lately, let's be cool. Check out Tango Horizon. This thing sold incredibly fast, listed at 3,200 euro. I can't tell if I actually like it or if it's just a unique design. It appears it might have started life as one of the slash AFDs or some other dirty lemon, but then they just kind of like gave it a whole bunch of racing stripes and gave it its own unique, almost tribal-like vibe. But it's all translucent, so you still get to appreciate the top. And oh, okay. We've got the ebony stinger on the back of the headstock. That just sold it for me. That's a great dark red color here as well. They also changed up our pickups a bit. Not surprised that one sold. And then they also had Kachinado Green. Just give me one second here. You don't have to feel bad for not knowing what it is either. <laughs> Google can't even find it. To me, it just looks like a green screen finish. So you can have a whole bunch of fun here. The back is also 100% matching. And then my personal favorite of theirs was the Silver Cherry Sparkle. Explosive finish that demands your attention. You get the metal ring toppers, clear pit guard to show off the craziness even more. It's all been chromed out, including your knobs. That is an insane finish. That would certainly have to be appreciated in hand. But then stark contrast of what appears to be black. But you know what? Now that I'm looking here, it looks like you might have a little bit of silver flake within that as well. I would say that is confirmed. But if you notice earlier, I said these are toppers. Gibson doesn't actually use metal pickup rings. Whenever you see this, it's just a topper over your regular plastic one. And hey, if you didn't notice, it's a P94 in the neck. That's unique. But before we move on to the demo shops, we've got a little bit of Gibson news. When you used to buy on Gibson's website, you'd see your color options, bourbon burst, unburst, iced tea. But if you actually bought direct from them instead of a dealer, you had no way of what top you're going to get or wait. But it appears now on select models, they are having a poster child that you can see the top, you can see the weight, you can see the serial number if it happens to match your birth date. It's not for everything yet. So far, I just see it on like the R9s and like the Les Paul standards things that they're probably overstocked on would be my guess. But this is another way that Gibson is trying to step up their game and becoming a dealer for their own brand. And in my opinion, makes it 100% viable to actually buy direct from them. So hopefully that rolls out for more models like this. I would not mind the dark purple burst in my personal collection if I could find like the most outrageous top. But sadly, nothing here. And as a little bit of feedback, I don't like the way they've done this because, uh, it's a little bit clunky, especially for research reasons. Like I want to know the three main colors and then maybe when you're on that page, there's like another row right here that you can then select from because this kind of gets confusing. They've mixed 
their colors. Like this one says bourbon burst, but this one looks very different, but yet still says bourbon burst. <laughs> so I'm sure they're working on it. But now the demo shop. European side of things still shut down. That's two months on one of the shop and like a month and a half. Have they just discontinued it? Are there just not any demos to list? I guess we'll, we'll keep checking. But the USA side had a great week. So here's a 54 reissue, except for this time it's got humbuckers. This is the Jeff Beck Les Paul, 4,200 bucks. Not surprised it sold as quick as, oh wow, it even had a stinger. <laughs> yeah, doubly not as surprised that this thing sold instantaneously. Congratulations on whoever picked that one up. I thought this one was pretty sweet too. Tobacco Sunburst Perimeter, 61 standard. Modified our pickups a little bit, as well as our finish. It's just a gorgeous looking SG, and we've been reviewing a lot of those lately. I like this one. It's another Silver Burst, but this time done up in satin finish. 4,200 bucks, can't go wrong. Silver Burst pulls off that dull look so well. But if you thought those pickup covers looked weird, it's because they are. You know, now that I look closer, I just thought it was kind of like an acid wash stain. This looks like a mountain range to me, like they specifically tried to make it look like the Arctic. <laughs> like you've got Aurora Borealis over here. But wait, 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 hold the phone. Why does this not look like a satin finish anymore? That might have actually just been a heavy VOS treatment. Heavy VOS, but look, dirty fingers pickups. That is certainly unique. They called this one Silver Burst as well, but on an SG special, no brainer price, 1200. What were they thinking? They were thinking, let's give somebody a bone. I would argue it's more of a gray burst though. Has like a little bit of blue blent with it. But then look at this, it's got a matching headstock. I'd argue it might not be the coolest we've ever seen, but they even did it on the back. As far as the headstock and body, they left the neck alone. But if you look on the back, there's some significant scratching right here. So here's my thought process. This was originally meant to be a mod collection guitar, but since it got a little bit too damaged, they threw it to the demo shop. And they put no premium on that refinish process. But then check out this SG Modern. So we just reviewed the new SG Supremes, and they do have an ebony version that we're going to review this week. This looks very similar to that, but I had somebody in the comments saying that this also has the side output jack, and you know what? I completely forgot that. <laughs> However, I don't think the body on the SG Modern is as thick as the SG Supremes, but it has been like four years since I had one of these, so I still believe there is a difference there. But this one was kind of cool because it was the ebony finish and it was a pretty decent value at 1800 bucks. But then I was flabbergasted that they're already going to throw one of these in there. These are $3,500 brand new Gibson.com exclusives. You can't get them anywhere else. Why are they doing 900 bucks off already? That's kind of a slap in the face to the people who bought them at launch. Like usually they at least wait a couple of months. That was a deal if you were there really, really early. It sold incredibly fast. Apparently there's a really deep scratch somewhere on the headstock. I couldn't see it in their photos and it is technically marked a demo. Even the one I bought brand new condition wise, it's not that much better. There was also a standard 50s faded and had a pretty nice top. 1800 bucks, can't really go wrong there. 52.99 might look like a black 355, but once again, another Brunswick Hawaiian blue that masquerades as being way too dark until you go through all the photos, adjust your contrast, and see the nice dark blue sparkle finish. Now hear me out on this one. For a classic, I thought this was particularly nice, especially for 1600 bucks because usually a classic is a plain top model, so this is an example of one that kind of slipped through the cracks, got some interesting flame. Like, it's not enough to say it's a triple A or a double A top. But after seeing some other classics when I was sorting through everything, I really came to appreciate this one, even if the back is a little bit mismatched. And oh wow, those headstock wings. <laughs> very different color. And very poorly routed backplate. But you know what? I really like it. Is it still for sale? Aww, I was gonna buy it. <laughs> Certainly much cooler than anything else on the market. But they had a Les Paul special, once again, Sans Pick Guard. One of the dark purple bursts, you could see the top for 25. Really heavily grained SG standard, must be the way that they dye those ones. But speaking of de eye, there's an eye. There's an interesting 70s flying V that they creamed out the plastics. I'm not sure if I agree with that one, but it has a certain look to it. But then another Gibson.com exclusive for way cheap, relatively. Like these are $2,500 brand new. Again, locked down, you can't get a discount on them. So to be able to get 600 bucks off for the new white finish, yeah, that was a no brainer for somebody. And whoa, <laughs> 
how it's lasted three days, I'm not sure, but the white Vs aren't as popular. It's the explorers that everybody wants, that people are selling for premiums on the used market. But all right, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. And don't forget to mark your calendars for that guitar show. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.